Hi, welcome to another training video uh, for the Yale School of Medicine CCMI X-ray core facility. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to use our uh, Nano ITC, which is by TA Instruments. Um, what's nice about the Nano ITC is between the sensitivity of the instrument and the ability to use a very small volume, uh, you can get a lot of information with a small amount of protein, protein sample, um, and be able to do more, sam more experiments with what is often a limited amount of sample that you might have. So this is our ITC unit here. Um, uh, back here we have a little tool holder where our syringe and burette holder are stored. This is the burette syringe holder. Uh, this is our control computer which you can access remotely um, for longer experiments so you can monitor them back from your lab. Over here uh, this is our degasser. Here, the stuff you'll need to bring. Uh, the first thing you need is a urette syringe, which is going to inject your um, titrant into your um, sample. One of these here. So the way the way that works is um, you're required to bring your own, buy one. So that's the part number from TA Instruments there. Um, I usually have a new one in stock, so if you order it and you show me your PO, I'll, you can have this one and then just give me the new one when it comes in. Um, I also have a couple of practice ones that are bent. You can use them, but I, I can't promise great data off of them. Other things you're going to need to bring are some 50 ml Falcon tubes, uh, your samples, and some MilliQ water, also, we're going to be using uh, this uh, 100 mic or 500 microliter Hamilton syringe with the long needle uh, to get the sample in and out of the sample chamber. If you're going to be doing a lot of ITC, I'd suggest buying a few of these in the long needle. Uh, that way you know it's clean and um, it, it's yours. The other thing we have here is this uh, test kit. So the first time you use the machine, or if you need a refresher, uh, you need to go through and do the experiments in the ITC test kit. So basically what that is, and the manual is printed out here, and I also have a CD that you can take with you and copy. It teaches you uh, basically how to use the instrument, describes what it does, um, how to do basic analysis on the software. Uh, when you go through this the first time, you'll do three experiments. Uh, one will be a water into water titration, which should give minimal volume. It's, it sounds boring, but it needs to be done to show that your <clears throat> the instrument's clean and your manipulation is correct and you're able to, to do that. If you can't do that, then you really can't do anything else. Um, after that, there's an experiment where you'll titrate uh, calcium chloride into EDTA. Um, that'll give you a, a binding curve. Um, go through the software and calculate your um, binding affinity and other parameters. Again, you should be able to get the standard value for that. If you can't, um, you're doing something wrong and you'll have to make sure you get that done before you do your own experiment uh, so people believe your numbers um, for your own protein. So the third thing you'll do is another, after you clean it, another water into water titration. Now the water to water titration, as I said, is kind of boring, um, but w one of the rules we have is that when you're finished using the experiment, or finished using the device, when you're done with all your experiments, you have to clean it and do a water to water. That's to demonstrate that the machine is clean and ready for the next person. Um, if you can't clean it, you have to keep, let me know, we'll, we'll figure it out, but you can't just walk away. Okay, so the control computer is here. I'm going to go through some of the software. One important thing is a notepad document here where for every injection that we do, uh, you want to do experiment number. Just add another number to that. Please use the tab key in between each one of these because I import this into Excel. It makes it easier. The date, your name, your PI, your sample and titrate composition. Uh, for the most part, um, protein or peptide is it, it, pretty good. Um, the only time 
we want to be more specific is if you have a really um, a volatile compound such as DMS or, or DMSO or something exotic that you put in there. Um, and then at the end you'll put notes. You know, mostly I'm, mostly I'm concerned about your notes is if it didn't work or your final one where you cleaned it and did water, water, and, and you show it's okay. Uh, for your own experiments, you can write whatever you want here. It doesn't matter to me. Um, other software is ITC Run. This, um, okay, so to start with, the computers log into Windows all the time. Uh, you shouldn't have to log in with your NetID. In fact, don't you'll have to log in with an administrator account and don't log out of Windows when you're done. Also, the ITC Run program should be up and running all the time. Um, that will keep the sample cell at 25 degrees. Um, otherwise, it takes, it takes about an hour or so to um, really stabilize the temperature. Um, and you'll see like the, um, you know, there's numerous significant figures on the cell block temperature. So when that stabilizes, it's, it's very specific. Uh, you can use it at different temperatures. You just have to wait until it equilibrates and then set it back to 25. Also, the degasser is set at 25, so your sample's going in at about the right temperature. So that's the ITC run. That's where you'll set up your experiment and run it and monitor it as it goes. Um, other software is Nano Analyze. You can load one or multiple um, data sets. And this is where you'll do all your analyzation. Um, you can export your uh, data and analyze it in your own program if you, um, you want to. Um, the Analyze software has a simulator in it that you're welcome to use. Also loaded on this computer is um, another simulator, which is um, quite advanced. Uh, my friend uh, Camille and Mike Hodston published this paper a few years ago. Um, which included uh, developing a software package which runs in Wolfram. Um, and basically it's an interactive ITC simulator. So you can put in all your values here. And a lot of the values are more advanced than the, the common experiments. And it's real time, so you can just move these tile switches and you'll see what your, um, your, your um, titration should look like after you uh, analyze the data. Um, also, don't forget to sign up on Schedule Book for your hours. Um, if you're going to uh, let it run overnight or you can't clean it or something, you have to stay logged in until the next, it's ready for the next person to use. Yeah, that's just how it is. If you're confused about the log file, um, before you use it, you want to look at who the last person was and what they wrote for their final test. Um, just to make sure that when you, because once you start, if it's not working right, then you're kind of responsible for cleaning it. If the other person was able to um, uh, finish successfully. I know I keep mentioning that. We did have a problem where um, two people were in a bit of an argument about who didn't clean it correctly. Um, and if you don't believe this log file, you can go into the uh, Windows File Explorer, highlight the hard drive, and search for um, star.nitc that's going to pull up all the NITC files which are those that this list should correlate to um, what's in the log file okay so let's set up a basic water to water experiment so first okay, I'm going to use the um, ITC test kit. When you're using this, you do want to be aware that the one manual is for both the low volume and the standard volume. Um, this is the low volume. Uh, just be aware of that. It's a little confusing sometimes where they switch back and forth between low and standard. So, with the test kit. There's a CD I was talking about if you want to print out your own thing. So in here is the water, the um, um, EDTA solution, the calcium chloride. So since I'm just going to set up a water water right now and we'll see how that goes. 
So let me show you how to use the degasser. So it's up to you to decide whether you want to degas your samples or not. For water, you, you pretty much have to degas it. It's, it's prone to getting bubbles. If you get a bubble in there, it's very obvious from the baseline. That's not good. Um, for your own protein samples and ligands, you may have to degas it, you might not. In fact, if it's got um, a volatile solvent or a buffer, you probably don't want to. But that's, you can determine that empirically. Um, so the little lid here. Um, uh, larger tubes will fit in the middle and you can fit Eppendorf tubes around the outside or you can put a little rack in there if you feel like it. Okay, so if we can look at the menu here. This is the main screen. So temperature set to 25. Keep that on there. There is a stir bar in there. Um, if you're using one of those little tiny stir bars, you can stir. Um, I don't find that necessary if you have a less than five milliliters. Um, there's a timer and then the vacuum on and off. So if you go to vacuum, uh, you can turn that on and off. Uh, this is the, um, the level of vacuum about there is good. Um, I usually degas it for about five minutes or so. That should be fine. You can either set the timer or just time it yourself. Uh, the clean function that you hopefully you won't have to use. That's where we use this uh, cell cleaner to pump a liter or so of liquid through the cell. Um, if, you, if you get to the point of using that, you're, you're in trouble. You, you, something bad happened. Uh, most likely you, your sample precipitated when it was in the cell. Uh, and there's ways around that uh, to prevent that from happening. I'll get to that when we get to the actual sample. Um, so I'm going to turn the degasser on. Okay. So we'll wait about five minutes. Okay, so after five minutes, we'll stop the vacuum. Take our water sample out. You want to sh be sure you have good technique. So this, I cleaned this before. Uh, basically, to clean this, you use your DI water. You can pull it up and down a few times. You can also fill up a, a second clean syringe, like a 10 milliliter um, regular plastic syringe, and put it into the top of this syringe and push water through that way. Um, so typically the cell is stored in water from the last person's use. Okay. So you want to rinse it three times and then put your sample in. Okay, so that's the third rinse. Now I'm going to add the sample. So you want to put in 350 microliters. So I'm going to go up to 500. And, you know, check there's no bubbles, of course. Now the sample cell is the opening in the middle. There's also a reference cell in there that has a plug in it. Um, you guys should not have to worry about the reference cell at all. I check that about once a month just to make sure it's okay. So please don't uh, change that. So then to put 350 in, I'll go from 500 down to 150. Our sample's loaded. Um, and that would be the same sort of technique as if you, when you put your protein sample in. Rinse it three times with your buffer to uh, prep the sample chamber and then put your uh, protein in the same buffer into the sample chamber. Um, then we're going to get the titration needle ready. So this can be a little tricky. Um, I'll show you the way I do it. Some people have different ideas of how to do it. It's up to you. Um, basically, to, to make a long story short, you want a solid column of liquid from the tip all the way up to the bottom of the plunger. Um, so it's very hard not to get air in it at the beginning. There's a way around that. So if we gently pull up, So right now there's liquid from the base to about there where we see the air bubble. Pull the plunger out and you can either tap it gently because it's glass 
or some people do a technique where you pull that quickly and the air bubble will come out. Okay, so now there's no air bubble at the base of the liquid here. So now I know I have liquid from here to somewhere in the needle. So what I'll do is gently push the syringe down until I have um, liquid coming out of the tip of it. And the tip is also the stir, so uh, it's important to be very gentle with these because um, if the needle gets bent even slightly, it's going to give you a background when it's stirring that's very noticeable. Um, and then you'll pull the liquid up to 52 microliters, so you'll be just off the gradation. So now I know I have liquid all the way from the tip up to 52. I'll take the burette holder. I'll take the burette holder, carefully place it in there, and as you screw it on there, and it's the same thread as in the, the, the um, storage case, as you screw that in there, you're going to push that two, or displace that two microliters out of the end, get that little bit of liquid off, and you're ready to put it in there. Um, so there is a gradation on the front that shows how many microliters or the percentage of volume that's still in the titration syringe. That should match, if we look over here, there's a screenshot of the software and where this, there's a little white level. That should match what the software thinks it is. If it doesn't, that means it got stuck for some reason. It happens very rarely, but keep an eye on that. And there's three notched clamps. So gently put it in. And once you get to the point of the Lexan getting in there, it'll be, um, it's safe. So, turn it so it's slightly off to the right. And you push it down and snap it in position. It should be firmly in place. If it's a little loose, it's, it's not hooked up right. You've got to do it again. Um, since it's kind of tall and back there, if you, you, if you can't quite reach it, there's a kick stool on the ground here you can use. Just be careful when you're doing that. Um, okay, so once that's in place, we're good to go. So we'll go over to our ITC run software. Okay, so we'll go into the setup, which is here. And that's going to ask you the injection interval, injection volume, and number of injections. So for the water water, it's 300 seconds in between each one, 5 microliters. It converts it to, for the um, analysis, it's actually 4.99 microliters, but that's a minor detail. Um, and 10 injections, so okay. Another thing we'll look at here is the auto equilibration, which we'll watch in a few minutes. And you can set either small, medium, or large expected heats. That's basically once you start it, it's going to wait till there's a nice baseline before it starts the injection, so you have a good baseline during the experiment itself, so your analysis will be uh, easier. Um, and these small, medium, large are just arbitrary. Uh, values that are set in the settings here um, based on what, what kind of heat you, you expect. So for water, water, we, we're going to leave it at small. Okay. There's a timeout function here that it will time out after an hour of auto equilibration. I usually leave that off because sometimes it's really close at that hour and then if it shuts down, um, you got to start all the way over. And you want to have an initial baseline here of 300 seconds, and that's going to allow you to get a nice baseline before that first injection. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. You want to turn the stirring on 
So as far as an RPM, it's, it's either 300 or don't turn it on. Um, other values are just not good for the motor. It's, it's not gonna, don't do that. The newest, I think the newest version of the software doesn't have that option. So we'll start the stirring. And if we listen to this, it's a little surprising the first time you hear it, but that's how it's supposed to sound. If it continues to make a much louder noise, that means the uh, burette holder is not in there correctly. Stop it and start over. Okay, so if we start the experiment up here. So I normally wait a little bit to start the experiment. So if we go to the monitor screen, this basically shows time and the change in heat here. Um, basically these giant jumps here are me taking the burette in and out of the holder and turning the stir bar on and everything. So when it starts, when you start the program, it'll start the auto calibration and try to get a nice stable slope. That's not going to happen while this is still uh, recent. So I usually wait 10, 20 minutes and then I'll start the uh, actual experiment. So um, after about 20 minutes, we'll start it and then we can watch the auto calibration. Okay, so we've waited about 20 minutes um, and we can see from the monitor that has um, set an auto scale um, that the um, system is pretty calmed down. There's not a lot of heat changes. So at this point, I'll start the experiment itself with this green button here. It's going to prompt you for a file name. So typically make a folder on the desktop that's going to have all your stuff in it. And you'll see the auto equilibration statistics will come up with this, um, and this is how it calculates it. So it's going to monitor the slope and the standard deviation until it hits an acceptable value for both of them. And then it's going to start the um, experiment where it's going to wait 300 seconds and then do the first injection. Um, if you're really impatient, you can just hit this start data collection immediately button here. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest it, but if you want to, you can. Um, so right now we're just going to wait till the slope and the standard, devi standard deviation looks good. Both of them have to hit. Um, and then it'll start. So depending on your sample, could take 10 minutes, could take an hour. We'll see. Okay, once the auto equilibration found a proper slope uh, and standard deviation, it's going to collect data and get an initial baseline for 300 seconds. We look at data here. Also, that has a uh, auto scale on the y-axis. Um, after that first 300 seconds, it'll inject the first peak, uh, and then inject the rest of the peaks, and take about 45 minutes for the end of the experiment. Okay, once the experiment is finished, um, we're going to look at the data analysis um, for the water-water uh, test and then a, um, a calcium into EDTA uh, test experiment as well. So once it's done, you can switch off the monitor tab and go on to data. And it should have your 10 injection peaks, one for each of the five microliter injections. Um, it will auto find a baseline originally, which is here. So if your baseline is pretty good, you can just subtract the baseline. Um, you can modify it by uh, adding or moving these points around. Um, if, you, if your baseline really needs a lot of work, you're probably better off just redoing the experiment. So if we subtract the baseline, here we go. It's going to give us our heat per injection, which is about um, minus 10 microjoules. Um, and that's about right, and all the peak heights are about the same. So, if 
after the water water test either before or after you use it that's what you want to see um, so I'm going to go in the um, test kit instruction manual quickly and um, we're going to briefly look at the analysis software for the water water that just gets you used to it so if we go to the this program here nano analyze start that up Um, and we'll open an experiment and you can open multiple ones too and we want to open the star.nitc files those are our um, raw data okay highlight it and go down to analysis tab here and basically that's the same data we just saw so if we follow along in the um, instructions here, it does an auto find baseline first, and then you can um, adjust that um, if you need to. If not, we'll simply subtract the baseline. And that's our, um, our data with the raw heat on the y-axis. Um, now this is um, set to be exothermic reaction. You can switch that if your experiment is um, endothermic. It's just personal preference of how it looks mostly. Um, so next we'll go to the area tab. And here what you want to do is confirm that the uh, concentrations, the injection volume, and the cell volume are all um, correct. So for water, we just leave the cell concentration as 0.001. It's kind of arbitrary at that point. Now, this initial cell volume for this particular ITC was calibrated at 182 microliters. Now, a big question comes up, well, I added 350 microliters of sample. Why do I put 182 microliters as my cell volume? Um, how does that incorporate the proper mathematics in the um, formulas to figure out my KD? That's because this, the nano ITC is designed to work in overfill mode. So when you add more than 182, that'll fill up the actual chamber. The rest will simply be above the stirring bar and the um, titrant gets injected into the bottom. And the 182 is measured at the factory before they send it out. So that's what you want to use. Um, so you'll make sure these are correct. Then we'll go into the modeling tab. Um, and we can see our points here and for the water one simply add a blank one okay and then allow it to fit it's basically fitting just a, a flat line and it's giving us a um, average of about minus nine microjoules um, according to the test kit the um, appropriate values minus three plus or minus two I, I've never seen it that low. In fact, this is when they installed it. So around, you know, around minus 10 or so is, is probably fine. Next, let's look at the um, experiment where we do calcium into EDTA. And this is what you'll want to do before you use it for your own experiment the first time. If you don't get the proper numbers doing that, then um, your own experimental outcome uh, might be suspect. So we'll add another file to this. Here's a calcium EDTA experiment. Okay. It's here. Okay. And this time you can see uh, we have much uh, greater heats on each injection. And we see our titration as it comes down. Um, same sort of thing. It auto finds where the baseline is to begin with, with the individual points. That looks pretty good. So we will subtract the baseline. Again, we'll go to the area. And this is where we want to confirm the syringe concentration, cell concentration, initial volume, and the injection volume. Um, and these values are on the, on the bottles that came in the test kit. And then over to modeling. So 
So a couple things here, what it wants you to do is to start by subtracting the background, and that's actually back in area. So they tell you to take the last uh, few points and average them, and put that in this subtract constant area. So that's about minus five for an average. Go over to modeling. And this is where um, you want to eliminate points that are outliers. So typically, people eliminate this first point. It's because it's been, the injection syringe has been sitting for close to an hour during the equilibration. So it just doesn't have the same volume as the other ones. So I'll get rid of that point. Um, then this little asterisk here, I can add a model. And in this case, it's just the independent model. Okay. And it just put a default one in here. So if we push on the fit button, it should go through a few iterations and fit our data to that equation. So what you want to do is look at your the KD, the N, and compare them to what they expect. So for N, um, you want to expect, you expect something, N, a, N to be equal to 1, um, 0.85, that is, this is close enough. And it's up to you to decide um, how close you really want to get because this is a known experiment. And they give a, um, a KD of, you should get something between 3.9 and 8.99. And for this one, we're getting about 5 times 10 to the minus 7th. So that, that's pretty good. At this point, I would uh, feel confident in going ahead and, and doing some unknown experiments at that point. So that's the data analysis. So as I mentioned previously, the first day you'll do a water water to get comfortable with the system and make sure it's clean. Do your calcium into EDTA and then do another water water after you clean it and you'll be good to go. So since there's a typically a long equilibration time, there's remote access on this computer a couple different ways. There's a tight VNC program. There's also TeamViewer, which is set up on here. So you can see that from your uh, computer up in your lab and watching the monitor over time, uh, especially during that auto equilibration time. Also, you know, thanks to technology, you can get a team viewer for your phone, so you can you know, keep an eye on it. That way you don't have to stand here for the hour of the equilibration. Okay, so you want to do your own experiments. As I've mentioned several times, when you're finished, you want to clean the cell well um, and do a water water uh, test at the end to show that you've cleaned it and it's ready for the next user. I may have mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. One of the biggest problems is that sample precipitates inside the sample cell when you add your titrant. Two ways to avoid that. First one is flush the cell out with your buffer three times before you add your protein to avoid precipitation. Uh, two, if this is an unknown experiment that you haven't done before, do a mock titration in an Eppendorf tube where you take your protein and you add some of your ligand in there to see if it precipitates. Anyway, basically you're just doing the same experiment and but you can see what's going on rather than being in there. That'll save you a lot of trouble. Also, when you take your sample out of here, remove the sample with the uh, sample syringe first, flush it a few times with your buffer, and then go to flushing it with water. Because if you add water right to your protein sample, you're likely to precipitate it. Okay, so that's uh, about it. We've, we've seen how to run it with the ITC run program. Uh, we've seen data analysis here. Also, the company TA Instruments, their um, uh, support is extremely good. Uh, you can contact them. In fact, on their website for support, you can attach files. Uh, just attach your data files with a little description of what you're doing, and they can help you troubleshoot or plan further experiments to get the information that you want.